Now, many people believe that you got to hard sell someone in order to close them. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos out there where a salesperson will literally come in and they will try to force someone into buying their product or service. And these type of people will probably say things like, come on, you got to buy this right now or you're making a big mistake if you don't buy this. And the sad truth is this actually does work and people do succumb to the pressure. But for those of you who don't want to sell this way, we actually have another alternative for you. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Patrick Dang here. Now, for those of you who don't want to be these sleazy hard closers, instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you some alternatives. Now, before we go ahead and get started, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to turn on that notification bell. Now, to go ahead and get started, here's the challenges when you are forcing someone to buy something they don't need. You may not identify with being a super hard closer, right? And it may not fit your personality style and you might feel sleazy or you might feel wrong for pushing someone into buying something they don't need, right? The other thing is, uh, when you are doing these hard closing techniques, sometimes a customer may buy whatever it is that you're selling, but if you're doing something that's a long-term relationship where someone continues to pay you month over month or even years, whether it's a coaching service, consulting, or even if you're selling some kind of subscription service, you gotta build a authentic long-term relationships and these hard closing techniques may get you the deal, but because a person is not invested in your solution and they were forced to buy something, they may cancel right away and you lose the customer. So instead, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a completely different technique on how to close someone and essentially what we are doing is you're getting the customer to close themselves. So you might be asking, how exactly does this work? Well, instead of telling someone how great your product or service is and forcing them to buy it, what you're doing instead is you're convincing the other person to convince themselves. So instead of you pushing something onto them, they are coming to you because they're making their own decision. Now I'll give you a simple analogy of how this all works. So let's look at the relationship between a parent and a child, okay? So let's say the parent wants a child to eat their vegetables. And if the parent says, hey, you gotta eat your vegetables, you better do it right now. Well, the kid might eat their vegetables, but they may be reluctant to do it. They may not eat the vegetables when nobody is looking and it doesn't build that long-term habit of eating the vegetables to stay healthy. That's essentially how I see hard closing, right? You're forcing someone to do something they don't need. Even if it's good for them, you're still pushing them to do it. And it works, but it's not the best method, in my opinion. Now, an alternative way to do it is instead of pushing someone, let's say the parent pushing the kid to eat their vegetables, instead what you can do is you can understand what the kid wants, right? So if the kid wants to be an athlete, they want to be good at sports, right? Whether it's a boy or a girl, right? Instead of pushing the idea of vegetables on them, you could say, hey, if you want to be healthy and if you want to perform at the highest level and if you want to beat all your friends in sports during recess or whatever the case is, then you got to eat your vegetables to get strong right? And instead of forcing them to eat their vegetables, you're saying, hey, if you want to do something you already do, which is become an athlete or become good at sports, then vegetables is a key component to making that happen. So when the kid hears this, right, it's not about the vegetables. That person wants to become an athlete. They want to beat their friends at certain sports. So if a vegetable, if all they have to do is eat the vegetable to get there, they're going to do it on their own. Nobody has to tell them because it aligns with what they already want. So what we want to do is we want to apply this lesson and help convince our customers to invest in our solutions, which is something they already want to do. And we're going to do this without pushing anything onto them. All right. So how you're going to do this is the first step you want to do is you want to make your prospect or your customer aware that they have some type of pain. Now, I've created a lot of videos about pain and how to uncover them. You can find more videos like this somewhere in the link in the description or somewhere, you know, on the screen. But essentially, I'm going to summarize it for you. If somebody takes a meeting for you, they're doing it for a reason. Typically, they have some type of problem. It might be a big problem. It might be a little problem, but they have some kind of problem and they're talking to you in order to see if you have a solution to the problem, right? You're just trying to see if it makes sense to work together. So if they already have the problem, coming into the meeting, what you want to do during the meeting is uncover that problem and really shed light to it. And the simplest way to get started in this conversation during your sales meeting is to ask a simple question. And that is, so what got you interested in taking this meeting today? Very simple question that 
any of you guys can use, whether it doesn't matter what you're selling or what industry you're in because it's so general. But essentially, when you ask this question, the prospect is gonna tell you something like, oh, we were interested in digital marketing service, or we want to do this or that, right? Whatever the case is, they wanna do something, they have some type of pain, and that's how you're gonna get the conversation started. Now, to understand their pains, all you gotta do is ask more questions and dive a little deeper and really understand and listen to what the person's saying. Again, I got a lot of videos on this, so I'm gonna summarize it real quick for you in this video. When you ask these type of questions like, hey, so what got you interested in taking the meeting today? The prospect will tell you why they even took the meeting. And then you try to un understand their problems by asking more questions. Some of these questions could be, oh, you know, how long has this been a problem? Oh, it's been a problem. Well, have you tried anything to fix it? Right? These questions dive a little deeper into uncovering what the problems are. Once you understand from a factual perspective what the problems are, then you want to switch it into motion and ask the prospect, well, how do you feel about this problem? Right? And the prospect is going to say something like, I feel frustrated, I feel angry, I feel lost, I don't know what to do, I need some type of, type of solution. Okay? okay, so now that we uncovered the pain for the prospect, we are going to take it to the next level and this is where all the magic happens. If you want the prospect to sell themselves, this is the question you are gonna use once you understand the prospect's problem and you get them to tell you their problems, right? All you're gonna do is say, hey, I understand your problem, I know where you're coming from. Now, in an ideal world, what would you want to happen? Right, very simple question. In a way, it's very general that all of you guys can use no matter what you're selling, but it works because the prospect already talked about all their problems and now you're just saying, okay, you got all these problems. In an ideal world, what would you want to happen? And the prospect, because the problems are so obvious, you know them, the prospect know them, everyone is aware of what's going on. The prospect's going to obviously have some type of idea of what they want, right? They want the problem to go away. So if they're not making enough money in their business, they're gonna say, I wanna make more money. Or if they have some kind of problem in their business that's taking up a lot of time, for example, if they're dealing with complicated taxes, they'll say, I just want these taxes and these problems to just go away, right? And they're creating an ideal scenario. And this is really important for you because by them creating an ideal scenario, you're gonna know exactly what they want. So then when you transition into telling your prospect what you do, you're gonna tailor your pitch specifically for what the prospect has already told you. And the key thing here is that you're not telling the prospect what they want or what's good for them. They're telling you exactly what they want and you just happen to be at the right place at the right time with a solution. And overall, you can kind of see that you frame the entire conversation so that it would lead to this moment. However, because the prospect gave you all this information willingly and they told you what they want, it's really their idea and you're just helping make their idea into a reality. So all you're gonna do from this point on, once the prospect tells you what their ideal scenario is, you gotta ask one more simple question. And you say something like, hey, okay, that makes sense. I might be able to help you with that. Do you mind if I tell you a little bit more about what I do? The prospect at this point is naturally going to say, absolutely right? Or they might just say yes, okay? And the reason is because they identified a problem, they already created their own solution, and you're just saying, hey, I might be able to help you make that solution a reality. You mind if I tell you a little bit more about what I do? And they are going to naturally say yes. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to pitch your product or service or whatever solution you're offering in a way that aligns with solving the person's problem and aligns with their dream scenario of what they already mapped out for you. All you have to make sure is that your solution fits into the roadmap that they already created during that conversation. So at this point, when you're pitching, you're not necessarily hard selling. You're just aligning what you already offer with what the prospect wants. You're not telling them they're stupid for not taking any offer. You're not forcing them to buy anything. You're making that alignment. And if the prospect, what's gonna happen is they're gonna see how your solution fits into the plan that they just created on the spot during that meeting. And naturally, it's gonna be obvious because you just connect all the dots. They have a problem, they want a solution, you have the solution. It makes it a lot more easier for them to invest in whatever it is that you are buying. So again, you don't have to hard pitch at this point because the prospect is essentially selling themselves. They're gonna think, oh, this guy has exactly what I need to make my dreams a reality. And that's how you're gonna get the prospect to invest in your solution by getting them to persuade themselves. So with that said, if you made it to the end of this video, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And one last thing, for those of you who enjoy this video, 
video and you want more in-depth training and you want to take your sales skills to the next level i actually created a free sales training series in order for you to increase your sales skills bring your awareness up and take your sales skills to the next level if you want access to this free training make sure you click the link in the description and it's going to tell you exactly how you can enroll in this free training so again if you want to take your sales skills to the next level make sure you click the link in the description so with that said that's everything we have to cover in this video and i'm going to see you guys in the next one.